Data sent back to Earth by the Pioneer space probes, showed that the outer planets were not solid planets but rather gas planets, comprised of mainly hydrogen and helium, and thus could not inhabit any life forms. But as more data was sent, NASA scientists came to the conclusion that there were other galaxies in the universe, that had solar systems and planets that were similar in size, temperature, and were close to their suns, exactly, like planet Earth. And with this realization, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, or SETI, was formed, with the help of Carl Sagan, Frank Drake, and NASA. Its purpose was to search and locate intelligent life in the universe. And on the 16th of November 1974, Carl Sagan and his team beamed the most powerful radio broadcast message into space, named, the Arecibo message, it was sent by the largest telescope ever constructed, called the Arecibo Telescope, located in Puerto Rico. The Arecibo message which was in form of a binary code, was sent to MICER 13 which is a star cluster, located 25,000 light years away from planet Earth. The broadcasted message contained information about planet Earth's, mathematics, DNA, population, solar system, and the telescope used to send the message. As mentioned earlier, the Arecibo message was in form of a binary code. A binary code is a computer language, and it's usually in form of one and zeros, where one means on and zero means off. When we convert the signal into binary code, this is what we get. You can almost see some patterns, when I zoom in and out. If we color all the ones in our code, this is what we get. Each of these black bars in every column, represents what the beings from other worlds would see after they decode the message. The first column represents numbers or math from 1 to 10, second column is the basic elements that make up life, which are hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, third column is the formula of nucleotides in the human DNA, fourth column is the number of nucleotides in a human DNA, which is 3.2 billion, fifth column is the structure and shape of a human DNA. Sixth column is the shape of a human being, seventh column is the average height of a human being, which is 5 feet 7 inches, eighth column is the average human population, which at that time was 4.3 billion, ninth column is the solar system and where planet Earth is located, tenth column is the Arecibo telescope that sent the message. And the last column is the size of the Arecibo telescope. Mysteriously a few years later, Astronomer Jerry Emmon was busy in his house reviewing data recorded by the Big Ear Telescope, when suddenly he discovered something that would come to shake the scientific community. Jerry Emmon had discovered a narrowband radio signal, which was received by the Big Ear Telescope, shocked and amazed by his findings, he named it, the WOW signal. The WOW signal lasted only 72 seconds and it appeared to be coming from the constellation Sagittarius which is 5,000 light-years away from planet Earth. What scientists found odd about the WOW signal was its unusual characteristics, including its duration, frequency, and intensity. It was very narrowband, which means that the signal was confined to a specific range of frequencies, rather than spread across a wider spectrum of frequencies. The most intriguing aspect of the signal was that it was detected at a frequency of 1,420 MHz, which is a frequency that is naturally emitted by hydrogen atoms. The frequency of 1420 MHz is known as the hydrogen line, and many scientists believe that it would be an ideal frequency, for beings on other worlds to use to communicate with us, as it is a frequency that is common throughout the universe. Despite extensive follow-up searches, the signal has never been detected again, and the mystery of who or what sent the signal, remains unknown. This discovery led to another message being sent into space. Voyager's passage by Jupiter accelerated it towards a close encounter with the planet Saturn. Saturn's gravity will propel it onto Uranus. And in this 
game of cosmic billiards after Uranus, it will plunge on past Neptune, leaving the solar system and becoming an interstellar spacecraft, destined to wander forever in the great ocean between the stars. And if Voyager should, sometime in its distant future, encounter beings from some other civilization in space, it bears a message, a phonograph record, golden, delicate, with instructions for use. And on this record are a sampling of pictures, sounds, greetings, and an hour and a half of exquisite music, the Earth's greatest hits. A gift across the cosmic ocean from one island of civilization to another. After the success of the pioneers, NASA began on the biggest project ever done by mankind. NASA was to send two space probes, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, into interstellar space, meaning outside of our solar system and into other solar systems in our galaxy. But because NASA was on a budget and could not afford enough fuel for the journey, they had to take advantage of an alignment that occurs after 172 years. This is whereby all the planets in our solar system are aligned almost at the same time, and the gravitational assists of this alignment would propel the space probes out of Earth's solar system and save fuel for interstellar space. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were launched in 1977, and just like the Pioneers, the Voyagers were both fitted with messages for intelligent beings, unlike the Pioneers' plaque messages, the Voyagers' messages were in the form of golden records, which contained more than one hour of audio and visual information, of planet Earth and its inhabitants. And this is what was on the record. On the cover of the record, were instructions on how to play the record in binary code, how long the message was, location of our sun, video wave signals found on the record, how to decode and scan the signals. And if they followed all the steps, this is what they would have seen as the first image. After successfully decoding the instructions, and let's assume they had a spare record player lying around. This is what they would have seen and heard. Hello from the children of planet Earth. As the Secretary General of the United Nations, an organization of 147 member states who represent almost all of the human inhabitants of the planet Earth, I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet. We step out of our solar system into the universe seeking only peace and friendship to teach if we are called upon to be taught if we are fortunate. We know full well that our planet and all its inhabitants are but a small part of this immense universe that surrounds us and it is with humility and hope that we take this step. I should like to extend the greetings of the government and the people of Canada to the extraterrestrial inhabitants. As of now, Voyager 1 is 23 billion kilometers away, while Voyager 2 is 19 billion kilometers away from planet Earth. Fortunately, they are both going strong. Mysteriously a few months later this happened. Here are four key points from this episode. A message showing the human DNA structure was sent to space from the largest man-made telescope. A signal as a sign of life from other worlds is received from space. An institute of searching for life on other worlds is created. Another message is sent into space, bearing sounds and images selected to portray the diversity of life and culture on Earth. In the next episode, after NASA stopped sending messages into space, two mysterious replies from otherworldly beings are received, and what they say will shock you.